Today we're going to learn about elements of a sentence. Sentences come in many varieties, but all sentences share these three characteristics. First, a subject. Second, a predicate, or in other words, a verb. And third, they express a complete thought. The subject is who or what the sentence is about, and there are two types, the simple subject, which is the main noun that tells who or what the sentence is about, and the complete subject, which consists of all the words that tell who or what a sentence is about. Here's an example. The boring vanilla ice cream cone melted on my hand. The simple subject in this sentence is the word cone, because it describes what the sentence is about. It's about the cone melting on my hand. The complete subject here includes the word cone plus all of the words that describe it. So, the boring vanilla ice cream cone. The predicate is the second element that all complete sentences have. And just like with the subject, there are two types, simple and complete. The simple predicate is simply the individual verb in the sentence. The complete predicate, which we typically refer to as the predicate, is the verb plus everything in the sentence that comes after it. So let's use the example from the previous slide. The boring vanilla ice cream cone melted on my hand. The simple predicate here is just the verb melted. The complete predicate includes the word melted plus everything after it, so melted on my hand. Practice identifying the simple and complete subject as well as the predicate in each of the examples on this slide. Some sentences have very short predicates, just consisting of the verb itself. Other sentences have more complicated predicates. There are five basic variations of subject and predicate which can be combined to form complete sentences. Each of the five practice questions you just completed represents one of the five basic sentence patterns described at right. In the following slides, we'll learn about each type in the order they are presented here. Basic sentence pattern number one, subject plus intransitive verb. An intransitive verb is an action verb that does not take a direct object. We'll learn about direct objects in a minute, but for now, just remember that an intransitive verb doesn't need any other words after it in order to make sense. You can remember the word intransitive by thinking of the prefix in, which means not. So intransitive verbs do not need a direct object. Take a look at the example here. Ice cream melts. I have underlined the subject and circled the intransitive verb. Notice that even though the sentence is very short, it still meets all three requirements for being a complete sentence. It has a subject and a verb, and it expresses a complete thought, meaning it can stand by itself. You can also see that the verb is intransitive because it doesn't need anything after it in order for the sentence to make sense. Practice identifying the complete subject and intransitive verb in the additional examples at the bottom of the slide. Here is basic sentence pattern number two, subject plus transitive verb plus direct object. As you might be able to guess, a transitive verb is the opposite of an intransitive verb. It requires a direct object after it in order to make sense. You can remember that transitive verbs need direct objects because transitive and transition both begin with the prefix trans. A transitive verb transitions to a direct object. Now, what is a direct object? A direct object is a noun or pronoun that receives the action of a verb in the sentence. It answers the question what or whom about the verb. Take a look at the example. The cat licked my melting ice cream cone. The complete subject is underlined. The transitive verb is circled and the direct object is highlighted. In this case, the direct object tells us what the cat licked, the melting ice cream cone. Practice identifying the subject, transitive verb, and direct object in each of the additional examples at the bottom of the slide. Basic sentence pattern number three. Subject plus transitive verb plus indirect object plus direct object. Now this looks complicated, but if you compare it to the last pattern, subject plus transitive verb plus direct object, you're only adding one more element, an indirect object. An indirect object is an object that tells to whom or for whom something is done and it always comes between the verb and the direct object. For instance, I bought the cat his own ice cream cone. The subject is underlined, the transitive verb is circled, the direct object is highlighted, and the indirect object is italicized. In this case, the indirect object, which is the cat, tells us who the subject bought the ice cream cone for. Practice identifying the complete subject, transitive verb, 
indirect object and direct object in the additional examples at the bottom of the slide. Basic sentence pattern number four, subject plus linking verb plus predicate adjective. Now this is a little different from the sentence patterns we've already looked at, but not too difficult. A linking verb is a verb that connects nouns or pronouns, people, places, things, and ideas, to words that describe, label, or identify them. Most linking verbs are a form of the verb be, such as is, are, was, were, be, being, and been. Here's a tip. If you can replace the verb with an equal sign, then it's a linking verb. For example, she felt sad. If we replace the verb felt with an equal sign, we get she equals sad. Now saying that someone felt sad and someone is sad is approximately the same thing. This will not work with action verbs. For example, take the last sentence, the cat licked my melting ice cream cone. If we replace the verb licked with an equal sign, we get the cat equals my melting ice cream cone. Now obviously a cat is not equal to an ice cream cone. Finally, this pattern ends with a predicate adjective, which is simply an adjective that follows a linking verb. Take a look at the example. My cat was very happy. Here, the subject is underlined, the linking verb was is circled, and the predicate adjective happy is highlighted. Practice identifying the complete subject, linking verb, and predicate adjective in the additional examples at the bottom of the slide. Finally, the fifth basic pattern is subject plus linking verb plus predicate nominative. A predicate nominative is a fancy term for a noun that follows a linking verb. You can remember that nominative and noun both start with the letter N. And don't forget, to identify linking verbs, you can replace the verb with an equal sign and see if it makes sense. For example, in the sample sentence, he equals a spoiled cat. Cat in this sentence is the predicate nominative. Practice identifying the complete subject, linking verb, and predicate nominative in the additional examples at the bottom of the slide. So there you have it. Now you know all of the elements of a sentence listed below. If you can't define any of these terms, make sure to go back and review, and thank you for tuning in.